We are having an absolutely fabulous growing season on the farm this year. And today I'm gonna to give you guys an update on how the crops look. Today is June 29th, probably several days to a week before this video is gonna be out live on YouTube. But uh, this is our early sweet corn patch. You can see it's tasseled out nicely and actually in the last day or two, we have little ears of corn silked out. That is, oh man, I can smell it. I wish you could smell it. There is nothing like the smell of fresh sweet corn. I'm pretty happy with the way this crop looks. I would say we're about two and a half weeks away from harvest. On an early year, we will have corn usually ready by the 4th of July. It's not gonna happen this year. Um, I'm thinking maybe, maybe July 15th, and at the very latest, July 20th, which would be one of the latest seasons in the, in the 20 some years I've been doing this. Uh, usually by mid-July, we're into our first patch of corn pretty good. So yeah, it is looking very healthy. No complaints whatsoever. The main thing I'm concerned about now is keeping the birds out and the raccoons out. So I'll probably put up a perimeter fence around our early sweet corn to keep out the coon. And for the birds, we use a soap spray. Um, it's not a pesticide, it's just some kind of uh, avian soap spray that we spray over the top of the corn and the birds don't like the way it smells or tastes so that will keep the birds out and that has worked very well for us over the last few years if we don't do that um, a flock of blackbirds could come in here and just wipe out an acre of corn in a day or two it's unbelievable how fast they can destroy a corn crop they come and land on the silks on the ears of corn and they peck into the kernels on the very top so they can uh, get the, the sugary sweet milk from the kernels and then the corn is pretty much unmarketable because it's all damaged on the tips and looks like uh, this looks like junk and then the bugs get into it so keeping the birds out is very important we have been irrigating pretty heavily i have a two and a half horse pump down here in this well pit i can get about 33 gallons a minute out of there i pump it through this uh, two inch high pressure blue lay flat line out to the vegetable field and that's where we're heading next field tomatoes are looking very nice we have put on the second string you can see this down here this is called the florida weave system and when the tomatoes get about a foot tall and they're starting to fall over we run strings around the post and around each plant you can see that how that works pretty simple it does a great job of keeping the plants up off the ground and there will be a third and a fourth string sometimes a fifth string because uh, these tomato plants will be at the top of the stakes when they are fully grown so the field tomatoes are just now setting fruit there's a little one there about the size of a quarter there's uh, three little pea sized tomatoes so yeah I can see when I look closely I can see uh, clusters of fruit beginning to form they look really nice. Now if we can just keep the bugs and the disease out of them, we will be in good shape. Out here in the field, this is where the two inch blue lay flat runs into a T and it can go out that way if we happen to have crops out here, which we don't this year. And it goes through a pressure regulator that brings the pressure down to a manageable pressure for the flat tube, the inch and a half flat tube. Um, the blue lay flat can handle like 60 PSI. This can only handle like 20 PSI. And over here, irrigation line has a pressure gauge, and you can probably not read that. It's at about 12 PSI, and we can shut off this part of the field when we only want to run that part of the field. Now I'll give you a quick look at how the irrigation works. We have these uh, valves that we pop in. We poke a hole in the flat tube, and then we have a valve here where we can turn the water on there's no line on this one that was just an extra hole that had to be plugged up here's a drip emitter with a line attached to it and all i do is turn the valve on and that line is irrigating those bell peppers but they don't need it today bell peppers are looking beautiful and we just have one row of eggplant here we used to grow about four rows but 
don't sell too many eggplant anymore. I see some little bell peppers down here forming. It's gonna be a couple weeks before they're ready. These things will be absolutely loaded with big, beautiful peppers in just a few weeks. And we'll be ready for harvest. And we do have some jalapeno and habaneros over there on the final row. Next, we got some yellow squash. We just picked them today. That's why there's only little baby ones on there right now. This is our first crop of cucumbers right here. And then our first planting of zucchini. And they are producing a bunch. We had a pretty good pick of zucchini, squash, and cucumbers today, about 40 tubs full. These tubs are one and three quarter bushel tubs. I never did get any sugar snap pea harvest on film. These are the final two bushels of the year, left over from the weekend, and they'll be gone in another day or two at the farmer's markets. We probably picked about 40 bushels this year, so not a lot, but it was a pretty good harvest for just a half acre apiece. Here's one that got missed today. That's the perfect size right there. It's easy to miss them. They're very camouflaged. When they're that size, they need to get picked because they're gonna double in size in two days. Zucchinis are looking excellent. And the first crop of cantaloupes. They're looking pretty nice, getting sized up well, about the size of softballs, but these will get huge. These will be seven to 10 pounds. They'll be almost like small volleyballs. Very happy with how the cantaloupes are looking so far. We plant cantaloupes three times. I used to do four plantings, but it just took us into September, even October, a little too late, and a lot of times they would get froze off. Here's some more melons that are getting sized up, almost halfway there. And over here are the watermelons, seedless watermelons. And you can see there's a wet spot right here. When it rains hard, it, it fills up with water almost over the top of the beds and they just are flooded out. And that's why they're not growing well there. We got some little baby watermelons. Oh, they're so cute. Another little baby watermelon. They're just the size of baseballs right now, so they got a ways to go. And these are the candy onions. They're just a sweet yellow onion. We used to grow about four rows of these, but they're no fun to plant, so we've just backed off the one row. We still get a ton of onions just off of one row. And then we got one row of red beets. Those will all be harvested here and gone in the next two weeks. So I water about 16 to 20 rows at a time, and I'll let, them, I'll let the water run for about five hours at a time. That seems to get the bed pretty wet underneath. Gives the plants the water that they need. And then I'll turn them off and turn on the next 16 rows. So I'm constantly walking through the fields, rotating the irrigation to make sure all the crops get the water that they need. All right, in the back half of the field, we have bare plastic for later plantings. And actually, we're getting ready to put out our third and final cantaloupe planting right here tonight, as soon as it cools off a little bit. This is an early winter squash planting of spaghetti and butternut squash. And I can already see some squash out there setting fruit, about the size of baseballs. Our second planting of zucchini will be going right here, and I gotta fix some of the plastic. This is degradable plastic, and it's very brittle. So we had a windy, we had some storms come through and it kind of blew up some of the plastic. So I'm gonna try to fix that a little bit because we got zucchini to put there tonight. This is cucumber planting number two right here. Looks like they're taking off nicely. And you can see I am starting to get some morning glory weeds coming up and getting out of control. Definitely gonna have to take care of those. This is cantaloupe planting number two and I am seeing some flowers starting to open up on these plants. So today we finished seeding our fall broccoli and cauliflower and next week we have our final seeding of zucchini and cucumbers around July 5th and then we will be completely done seeding for the year. Now I still have 
two to three more sweet corn plantings. I will be planting sweet corn until mid-July and I'll be planting green beans until the end of July, sometimes even into the first few days of August. Here is green bean planting number two, looking pretty nice. Planting number one actually doesn't even look as good as number two, but I'm real happy with how these look. Getting some grass issues out there that I might have to spray, but uh, these beans look very nice. All right, I'm gonna drive the ranger down to the other end of the farm where there are some later plantings of sweet corn and pumpkins. I wanna show you guys what the pumpkins look like in amongst the dead rye, the cover crop that they're planted in. So I'll give you a close up of the pumpkin, maybe pumpkin plants, and give you a nice overhead shot of what the field looks like so you can see the green rows of plants that are starting to pop through the top of the rye. Like I said, we plant sweet corn about 12 or 13 times from early April all the way to mid-July. And here is our third planting, I believe. So you can see it's just now knee high, as the old saying says, knee high by the 4th of July. Well, these days it's more like chest high or head high by the 4th of July or you're way behind. But uh, here's some knee high corn that is probably gonna be ready to pick at the end of July, early August. And I still plan to plant two or three more times all the way into mid-July and that will provide us fresh sweet corn to harvest all the way till the end of September, sometimes even early October. So this is what the dead rye looks like after it's been sprayed and killed and planted into. And you can see what the pumpkins look like now. Very nice, healthy looking pumpkin plants. They're getting ready to start vining out here soon and there'll be big yellow flowers everywhere in this field. So the stand is pretty good. Every now and then we get a blank spot with no pumpkin but these things vine out so long that they will fill in this field and it will be a solid green sheet of leaves in just about a month. Well, you can see this looks just like straw now and the pumpkin vines will pull this rye down and then the pumpkins will set. It'll all look like this where it's been run over. Um, the pumpkins will actually form on top of this rye. It'll all get pulled down and there'll be the pumpkins will be sitting on here and they'll be nice and clean. There'll be no dirt on them. You don't have to wash them. But here's some beautiful pumpkins. They're normally spaced about three, four, five feet apart, somewhere in there. Very healthy looking. So you can see the overhead shot of what the field looks like. It just looks like a field of straw right now. But in just a few short weeks, the pumpkins will be vining out and it'll be a solid mass of green leaves out here covering this entire field. You can see all the blossoms there. All those blossoms will be green beans. I don't see any beans forming yet. It won't be long. Any day we'll start having little green beans. Everything's still in the bud stage and flower stage. So we're probably two weeks away from green beans, if not more. Um, the green beans go all the way across this field. I know it doesn't look like much right now because there was some rye out here. Um, that stuff's still dying. The green beans are still growing, but it'll be a field of green out here before long. And then the last half of that field is all sweet corn. Sweet corn planting number two is right there. It's almost waist high. It's right there beside of the pumpkins, just west of the pumpkins. And that field right over the hill, you can just see the top of the green corn there. That's planting number three. So that means this planting here is planting number four. When you plant corn and beans like 10, 15, 20 times, you start forgetting where everything's at. So that's why you have to have spreadsheets and maps of everything. So I have good records. Um, I can look back 20 years and know exactly where every crop was ever planted. So very important to keep good records on a produce farm. Alrighty folks, that's a quick update on the produce crops here at Wishwell Farms. Thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you again real soon.